welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, I'll be taking a piece of PVC pipe and making it look like wood using a rotary tool. To get started, I'm using my rotary tool with a cutoff wheel attachment to create the look of wood grain along the length of the pipe. These cuts don't have to be particularly deep and don't need to be long continuous lines since they'll all start to blend together as you add more to the surface of the pipe. To give it some more character, I'm going to cut a big groove and some notches into the end of the pipe. This will help make the factory end look a bit more natural and help disguise the pipe. Once I'm happy with the look of the groove, I'm going to take a sanding sponge and lightly sand the entire pipe. This will help soften all the lines we created with the rotary tool. Now that the surface is smoothed out, I'm going to put some bends into the pipe with a heat gun to make it look more stick-like. With the pipe warm enough to bend, I'm going to use a dowel to help add some shape and give it a knot. Don't worry if you accidentally melt a hole through the pipe. I'll show you how to fix that later. Once the pipe is bent the way you want it, use a spray bottle with water to help rapidly cool the pipe and set your bends. Take your time with this step, as the pipe can retain a lot of heat and will go from rigid to pliable very quickly. With all the shaping done, it's time to fix that hole and add in some more elements to create the look of wood. For this step, I'm using epoxy sculpt. It's a two-part sculpting clay that is mixed together by hand and can be applied like putty. It can be smoothed out with a bit of water and cures solid in 24 hours. It's a great product that has a ton of haunt applications. I'm going to work in small batches and apply the epoxy sculpt in spots where I want to create the look of knots or lumps in the wood. I get the clay onto the surface and then wet my fingers to help smooth out the edges where it meets the pipe. Once I'm happy with the general shape of it, I'm going to take a sculpting tool to give the knots some more dimension and to add in some grain lines to help blend it in with the rest of the pipe. You could use a toothpick for this step and would achieve the exact same look. Because the dry time is so long, you won't need to rush to get these parts looking exactly how you want, so take your time and don't be afraid to try different options.
with all our additions completed, it's time to let it sit out in the sun to cure. Now that the clay is fully cured, I'm going to base coat the pipe with a medium brown acrylic paint using a chip brush. You may find that you can still see some of the pipe through the paint, but that's all right. It will create more color variation in our finished piece. Once the base layer is dry, I'm going to take a darker brown and thin it with a bit of water to help get it into all of the grain lines we created. Before it has a chance to dry, I'm going to take a rag and wipe away the paint that's on the surface of the pipe, leaving behind the paint in the grain. You can do this in sections, since the paint can dry quickly during the warmer months of the year. The final layer of paint will be a black wash. I've thinned out some black acrylic paint with water at a 2 to 1 ratio, and I'm going to apply it the same way we did with the previous color, painting it on and wiping it off. This will help tone down the brown and bring in some variation to the overall color of your pipe. If you've gone a bit too heavy in sections, you can spray your pipe with water and wipe a bit harder to remove more paint. This is one of those steps that you want to start light and go heavier to achieve the best look. It's always easier to add more paint than it is to remove it. This last step isn't necessary, but because I was impatient, I had sections of paint get stuck to my work surface, so I need to hide them. To do this, I'm going to paint on some moss. I'm using a dark green, a very pale green, and a mustard yellow to mix up a mossy color to hide these spots. To give it a bit more dimension, I added a bit of black to the green color to create some variation around the moss spots, and then gave the whole piece one last wipe down with the still damp rag I used to remove the black wash. This softens up the moss paint and helps to blend everything together a bit more. Allow the piece to dry before sealing it with a matte clear coat, and you're done. If you'd like to see more tutorials like these, subscribe to the channel, like the video and hit the notification bell to be alerted when I put out a new video. And until next time, happy haunting.